And welcome back to another Super Coach video with me, JD. You are joining me post the match, sim, preseason, KO, Amy series, games, whatever it's called. And joining me, of course, is the effervescent Giordano, George FTTV. How are you going this evening, George? Thank you, Jackson. Going very well. Head spinning from all the footy. And hopefully very close to finalizing the team at this point. Still round zero to go, but uh, only like a couple moving parts here and there. But yeah, it's been a pretty full on preseason, full on weekend and ready to ready to start, I reckon. Would you say your head's been spinning enough that you would say end up passed out behind a Fred again DJ set, not uh, knowing what to do while people are trying to find you via Snapchat for help? Or is that just a really weird long intro that only people uh, from a small group of friends would happen to know about a story from a weekend? I don't think we should name names, but they know yeah. that person knows who he is. Um, and we are yeah. also very, very disturbing pictures as well. <laughs> um, but yeah. Okay, so not that level of head spinning, but I would say I'm in the same boat as you that uh, I took in a lot of footy over the last few days and a lot more players popped up than I expected that I'd be interested in, uh, especially across the mid price and, you know, discount um, keeper and rookie level. So many more players than what I thought we'd have to play with and probably not as many premiums putting their hand up as well, which makes for a pretty tricky position, but also fun challenge to solve over the next couple of weeks before we've got to lock in sides for round one. But Today, we're just going to go through, I guess, some of the games and speak to the options that popped up and maybe rule some of those in for uh, consideration and rule some out. And I guess no better place to start with the first game, which was uh, Richmond, I guess, against Collingwood. I actually wish I'd zoomed this in maybe a little bit better so I could see what the score was. So Pies won 76 to 46 for that one, and we'll get the game up on the screen so everyone else can have a look too. Um all right, so Scorsi, if you haven't used this website before, it is dfsaustralia.com. They have great stats. You could not ask for anything more. And they've recently added live scoring as well. So in the right two columns there, you can see the fantasy and super coach scores. I think the break-evens are fantasy-related, so I wouldn't put too much stock into those at the moment. Uh, but, George, what was your kind of perception of this game? Pat Lipinski killed it. But, uh, yes, he did. Yeah, that is, the, that is the that is the top score on the board. I'm glad bump you can him, read. Bump him up your draft. But I think uh, watching Nick Dacos, I'm thinking, do I really want to anti-pod this? And I said no, because I didn't think he played that well and he still turned up in half a game. Yep. So, uh, so he is one of the most owned players in the game and most owned in at least uh, between these two teams at 69%. Nice at time of recording. And I, you know, I've been pretty hot on him all preseason. I just think he's going to be the clear number one defender. I don't think we saw anything in this game to suggest otherwise. So just 57% time on ground, but still tunned up, uh, which is pretty impressive. And yeah, I mean, he's going to play more midfield. I, the Finn lead CBAs for them. Until he uh, came off, or I don't remember. I'm just going to say I think the um, the Finn Mag tag is real, and I think it's going to happen. Because he's going to get a lot of attention this year, surely. Yeah, they've been playing Finn Mag in back pocket, plus following who they want, whoever they want to play him on. I, I think that's going to happen with Dacos. So I think that might be a bit of a rough round four and five. Um, but it's he'll probably pay you back. And you can VC him early on. So uh, regardless, I think I'll just pick him and not worry about it. Outside of uh, Dacos, not a lot to consider in terms of classic super coach. I'm sure for draft, there's lots of interesting names in there. Um, beyond Dacos, it really comes down to the rookies. And Finn McRae was one that a lot of people were hoping for. Once again, he looked good when he was on ground, but that was the second half of the game. And I just struggled to see how he has a spot given he wasn't in the best 22 for this one. They still got Pendlebury to return and someone else whose name's escaping me at the moment. But uh, I, I feel like he's a rookie that we've had better options um, pop up than him. Um, Reef McInnes, same kind of boat, which is, looks like he's going to be just on the fringe. And then um, Dean as a defender option, I think same boat as well, scored very well when he was on. So uh, what... 47 super coach, 63 fantasy from what is it, 37% time on ground. So great scoring there. But uh, yeah, I think unfortunately all of them look like they're going to be just out of the premiership. So 
yeah, Finn looks like he came on for Nick as well, roughly around that time. So uh, I don't think there's any real relevance here apart from um, Nick. All right, and then moving over to the Tiger side, an interesting one here because you've got Uze obviously coming in as a coach. Coach change, you expect some opportunity to pop up, some people to move around roles. Um, or maybe we'll just start from the top and go down, but Jaden Short is one that people have got pegged as a potential primo uh, this year. Did you like what you saw out of him? Yes. I, he had a large majority of the kick-ins. And, he's... and he moved back into that halfback role that we really – um, have seen him excel in, in the past and be at that premium level. So for me, I can't really see myself starting him just given the buy, but feels like one that we'd consider uh, if he gets the right price midway through the year. Being injury prone from last year, three different soft tissues or three different incidents. So that puts me off plus the buy, but I think he'll score 105 plus. Cool. Uh, Taranto, once again, like good premium option, but the buy I think probably rules him out for a lot of people to consider starting. And then Thompson Dow is the one that's really kind of shot out of nowhere to be considered for our side. So at least some people are considering, I want to say he's around 260K um, mid only option. And he's had what, two weeks of good scoring now in a row, uh, like unofficial kind of stat tallies. And then uh, a 96 here on the 82% time on ground. Did you like Dow's game? Yes and no. The He's for like fifth year now. He's been in the system a long time. He's looking at VFL numbers. For a mid, he averaged 72 in the VFL. That's not high enough. Nowhere near. It's like 20 less than Finn McRae. That's 50 less than James Jordan, to put it in perspective. So the outside game, the tackling doesn't seem to be there. But I think the inside game, like winning it, handballing it out, clean hands, is there. You can do worse than Dow. I wouldn't be forcing him in though. The uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, what I saw out of Dow is um, I don't know. It reminds me of his brother in many ways. But his inside game was very good. Uh, but beyond that, he just offered nothing to that side. Like he could not find a ball in the middle of the ground, and it reflects in his fantasy numbers just fifty-seven. Um, so if he wasn't winning it at the contest, he basically just did nothing for mine. Had sixty-one percent CBAs and. It just feels like they don't need another one of his type. Like, is he not just like Hopper? Is he not just like Taranto? Fortunately, better than Hopper at this rate. <laughs> um, I think you've got to be careful with the TOG in round zero. I see 82% TOG here. For someone with no very low outside game, you, you see, it seems like these types would have lower TOG. So I would watch that number carefully if you are interested in him. I will say the one thing about preseason games is they do tend to be less stoppage based than. The real deal. I had a quick look um, at the ruck contest. That's a number of ruck contests, and there was roughly ten percent fewer ruck contests in across this weekend of games compared to the average from last season. So, uh, the, in, this is one of those games where it was much fewer. So there was just seventy-eight ruck contests between these sides. Richmond averaged ninety-three uh, last year, so fifteen fewer than that. Now, obviously, you could have um, some. Uh, style change but that should mean more stoppages which would help someone like a dow but i don't know just the complete lack of um outside game strikes him as someone i'm probably not considering too much at the moment just given that that super coach fantasy ratio i don't think uh, something he's going to maintain uh, he had really high efficiency for an inside mid that you just wouldn't expect it to persist um, just quickly, I'm going to talk, I guess, through all Bolton, Bolter, and Dusty Martin at the same time. Uh, sorry, uh, not Bolter. Uh, Bolton, Baker, and Martin. Um, so all kind of playing uh, half forward, mid rotation, the three of them. Uh, I wasn't considering any of these for primo status, and this game changed nothing. It did nothing to change my mind on that. Are you in the same boat? None of those being considered as a premium or a no, keeper at some point not this really year. With the buyer. I think Dusty's worth monitoring, given what he did back into last year. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think the CBAs will be good enough for Bolton. I think they've already stated they want him a bit more forward, but yeah, he's gone. Uh, I, I wouldn't worry about these at this stage. Just let it play out, If let the forward line play out. So, um, yeah. All right, then moving on into the rookies. We've got uh, Naismith, who scored the 87 off 69% time on ground. Uh, filling in for Nankervis, who said he's trying to be there for round zero, but there's a chance he might miss. Is Naismith the rookie that you have in your R3 position at the moment? Yes. I. 
it's a hard one though because Nan Canvas's uh, plantar fascia issue is not exactly clear. I think he's optimistic that he will play and they could play together or they could just play one and Ryan. I don't know. If he's there round one, I'll pick him. We'll see. We'll get a look in round zero, but he played well and impressed me. Nice. And then uh, Gibkiss is the other one there. So uh, played nearly, oh, so played 81% time on ground and scored 62 super coach. Uh, for me, I think he's got very high job security. He did enough. I think Tigers aren't going to be particularly great. There's going to be a fair bit of ball back down there. People may be scared off by his insane super coach fantasy ratio of two to one, but I think he led the game for spoils or something like that, you know, 11 spoils. And that's where he scored a lot of his points in the past. He spoils rather than intercept marks. So I kind of saw everything I needed to see to suggest that Gibkiss can make his 150K and have really job good job security as a, a D7 or D8. And I'm sure some will even consider putting him on field. Uh, what did you see out of Gibkiss? He played all right. I thought he looked really good, really, looked really fit, a um, bit bigger than as uh than what we saw in year one which is good uh like if i if i need to cut money and go down to another defender rookie i'm fine with that but yeah he'll make earlier money with the round zero buy uh oh, sorry he's playing in round zero so yep. um if i can fit him in i will if i can't i, I won't yeah the I'd, I'd, I'd like to though points. yeah yeah yep uh cool and then anyone else from these games you want to discuss or are you happy to move on Steely Green, rookie. Thought he'd get more game time with Mansell out, but didn't. So not an option, but could be downgraded at some point. And a special shout out to Hopper. 23 disposals for 27 super coach really is something special. So props. All right, next game, Carlton Melbourne. Melbourne ran away with this one, 101 to 63. And... Um, like I think pretty interestingly is we've already heard a fair few like round zero implications for both these teams since this game. So news off the top being that Oliver sounds like he's going to be available for selection in round zero, which is interesting. And then the Blues uh, seem to continue to struggle with injuries. So uh, there's a chance that Williams won't get up for round zero. Walsh sounds like he's not going to get to round zero. Weedering's missing round zero. And I'm sure they've got other injuries on top of that as well. So uh, they've got one of the Hollands banned. Um, so yeah, I, th I think it's, bit of struggle straight for them but despite that they still i think looked pretty good and their their lists otherwise in a good spot um did you like have any big observations about this game or should we go straight into players no nah, not really i probably don't take as much game style stuff uh, i'm more look at individual players i uh, just more comfortable than that i did notice carlton were moving the ball quite slow and they yeah. had like zero goals, four behinds for large majority of the game. Started moving I think a bit quicker and they... That was the most slowing. interesting part for me because this was the story of last year. They started off with slower movement and struggled. And then once they sped it up at the back end of the year and started taking the game on, they really excelled. And it felt like we saw a lot of that same struggle again in this game, which I, I expected them to be focusing more on, on moving the ball than what we actually saw. Really strange one. Yeah, I don't like Colton as fantasy prospects this year. Um, cool. All right. Well, uh, despite that, are th is there really anyone from this side that we're looking at? I don't think there is. Williams has really been the big one. Uh, and he's obviously, well, he may not play round zero. And I think if he doesn't play round zero, I'm probably not selecting him round one. I'd rather wait and see. I like George uh, Hewitt's game. He's cheap, but I think there's options in that price bracket that we'll probably look to. And this also Fantasia who mm. I thought was lively early and I didn't really see much of him for the rest of the game. Yeah, that's right. He had a few um, contests where he pushed up to the ball and kind of was the first receive out of a stoppage and was really able to move it well inside 50. But yeah, that, um, that went as the game went on. I think as long as he's fit, he's going to play every game for them. But yeah, I, this is once again, another player I'm happy to wait and see if he scores a big, round zero score maybe uh people consider jumping on um but yeah like i, I just wait and see on that pick him up after his buy if anything and then yeah beyond that no one really of any interest uh moving quickly over to the d side max gone i think he's probably in everyone's side at this point he played the the weird thing that carlton did was like alternate their rucks i think so they had uh de Koning play the second half and uh What's his face play the Pitney. first? Pitney. Pitney, that's it. I just wanted to call him Frenchman, which 
is yeah, I don't know. But anyway, so they had one ruck each each um half and Gorn just ate them up. He dominated this game. Uh I assume he was already in your side, but just lock him in now. Is this the best ruck pick of the year? Yeah, don't think twice. I think if you're playing around with a wanting to move off Gorn D, I think it's not Gorn that moves. So yeah, lock him in. Cool. And then uh, beyond Gorn, I think he's something like once again near 60% owned. So very highly owned player. Um, the other relevant ones from the Ds, you've got, um, I guess at the premium level, you've got Petrarca, uh, who is you know roughly 20% owned. I think he was someone that you were looking at consider, uh, you know, starting and he played exceptionally well this game. I thought he looked amazing. But with Oliver coming back, he's probably not someone that I'm overly hot on. Is he still, you know, in your consideration set? No, I like him, but Oliver's playing around zero. The plan was to pick him if Oliver was out for half the year. Uh, they're yep. throwing Salem in the midfield, maybe Rivers, a few rotations. Salem looks really good, actually. Um, yep. So I think the CBAs might not always be there for Petrarca. It could be like a 60% job. Uh, upgrade yep. target, though. I still want to get him in at some point. Yep, yep. Um, all right, and then we start to get to move into some of the cheapest. I mean, you mentioned Salem and Rivers, uh, but I mean... I think there's enough uncertainty with Oliver coming back and decide that I wouldn't really consider either. Stop me if you disagree. And then moving on into Jack Billings, who I thought once again looked pretty good. He had 91 super coach off 76% time on ground, kicked a goal. And look, what I've noticed from Billings in both of the last two games is he's not going to be a high accumulation type wing. It's not really his role. And for me, he was playing like wing half forward. That was kind of his mix of role. But really, it seemed to be to get the ball into his hands in transition so he could kick it inside 50 and hit up the right targets. And I think he's done that really well two weeks in a row and feels a need that they otherwise don't have. Like, I think he's their best user going inside 50 from what I've seen. Um, how are you feeling about Billings? Is he, you know, in your sides? Is he, have you been mucking around with him in your sides? No, he's been in the whole time, so he'll stay. I like this game. Didn't like the wing time. I prefer half forward, but... For, yep. for his price, I think um, he's done 80 to 90 for oh, over five years, I reckon. So probably more than that. So he's in for me. Cool. Uh, and then the last thing, I guess, to discuss is some of the cheaper options from D. So Marty Hoare obviously missed and wasn't even in the extended side. So I think he's probably someone we can knock off our lists. Maybe he'll be a downgrade target for us later on in the year. Um, and then we've got uh, what Bailey Laurie uh, Shaki, who's I think only 123k, which surprised me. Uh, Howes, um, they're probably the three. Oh, and Windsor, they're probably the four worth talking about with Windsor being the most highly owned. Um, I, I thought there was a very good chance that Windsor was going to be in my side watching this game. And I think he's in roughly a third of the teams at the moment. But as the weekend went on, I think I've seen other options better than him from other teams. And obviously, um, he scored 77 super coach off 66% time on ground, which is great numbers. But that was padded by two goals, great goals, don't get me wrong, great running goals. But it feels like uh, he went missing for large stretches of this game despite having moments where he looked really good. And for me, I think at his price point, you know, that 180, 190K mark, there's going to be better options. But, yeah, how, how are you thinking about Windsor? Yeah, he set out most of the fourth quarter. He looked really good. He's going to be a good player for them. Not really accumulated in juniors, so uh, not paying 180 for him. Yep, yep, yep. Um, in fantasy, I know not everyone's interested in this, but I think he's 288K, so maybe a little bit cheaper. Are you considering him in that format or are you off him everywhere? Oh, geez, I need to work on the fantasy team. Uh, All right, let's skip that question then. Um, I think he's like I think he's on the bench at the moment for me, yep. but we'll see. Yep. Um, second I, I, consecutive good performance um, out of uh, Bailey Lowry. Uh, is he, he in your thought process at all? Oh, I think he's high sub risk because I looked at this game and I just looked at who's going to come in for Oliver. I think it's Laurie. Yep. Because Shaki will go out for Petty most likely. And like, unless you want to change the structure and say, send Salem back or something, which I don't see happening. Um, I think he's high sub risk. I was around zero watch, I think. He's not in my team though at the moment. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I, I think uh, same problem. He's with the amount of good rookies we've got this year, he's probably lower on the consideration list. But with uh, all these D's players, they got the round zero buy. So we're going to get to see who's best 22 is and who's getting subbed and who isn't. And then also free scores. So he could be someone that actually still finds his way into our sides, which is pretty interesting. 
All right, Sydney, Brisbane up next. And I think this was the double header, right? Um, this game got delayed by a couple of hours and then ended up clashing with GWS Gold Coast. So hard to catch both of these games. I think I only ended up watching maybe the first half of this one, but I saw enough of it. Um, and I know you went back and watched this one at a later date. Lots of interesting players in this one. Let's start with the Swans. Errol Goulden was someone that hadn't been talked about a lot in the Discord, but has started popping up in a lot of teams. And I know you were really hot on what you saw from him. I just think who do the points go to at the moment in mm -hmm. Sydney? No Adams, no Mills, no um, Parker. Yep. So, yeah, said he wants to play more inside this year. No I Adams, mean, yeah, yeah, happen. yeah. Cool. Um, has the buy early. I looked at the fixture and he has like teams that he went 150 on last year early on. And there's a West Coast there as well. Uh, but after the buy, it fixture gets worse. It's like GWS and a few harder teams. I'm considering him. I, I'm worried for not owning him. They said his running's improved this year. Uh, he, he's hard to pass up. He's going to be annoying antipod. So... Even with the buy, I'm trying to get him in at the moment in my team. I think he's in my latest iteration, but he's sort of in and out at the moment. So what do you think of Errol? Uh, I mean, I love Errol. I, he's um, one of the players that if like the buys didn't exist, I think he'd be very high in my consideration list. Um, but between that and this one's having other good options, I do struggle a little bit to buy into him. Um, uh, like I've done full episodes of him coaches panel on Errol good and about how good the early run is for him. He like went 140 average or something on each of the four teams that he's uh, coming up against to start with before the buy. Um, as you pointed out, like who are the points going to if it's, if it's not Goulden, like it's, it's the, what they're, they're missing Warner from the side. And that's, I guess the big one. Um, so he's still going to come back in, but yeah, like the, I think the thing against Goulden is that, because he plays more outside, he is maybe more susceptible to a tag uh, and could be, you know, have down games, but he's also got one of the best ceilings. He's gone back-to-back -back big games in preseason. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just going to come down to structure. He's definitely in the list I'm considering and he's in, uh, yeah, over a third of sides at the moment. So big up there. Um, Has let's Finn McGuinness maybe just quickly after the buy, his buy, sorry. Mm, okay. Um, that's good to keep an eye on. Yeah, and yeah, with some of the Hawks injuries, I didn't think Finn was going to make that side. I think it's probably pretty likely that he does now. Uh, all right, going through the rest of the Swans, there's tons of relevant players in here, but next uh, on the scoreboard is James Jordan, one that um, I'd been keen on. I think you'd been keen on in the preseason as well. I know a lot of people are a bit unsure on him just because he's come in to play more of a wing role with some CBAs, which is, I guess, quite similar to his previous role at the D's but yeah did you like what you saw out of Jordan and is he in your side at the moment yeah mostly wing to be honest I wasn't big on him I didn't quite understand what the inside mid time would look like but I knew he's a big accumulator in in VFL so uh, I saw enough where he can just accumulate and they have lots of outs so I think they've got to play him a bit inside and he can score okay he scored okay on the outside uh, um, I think 75 plus as a wingman at Melbourne so I think it's okay. I think it's okay, Big. I don't think it's must-have, but he's in my team. Yeah, I mean, one thing to flag here is the nine marks and 31 disposals is not what we're expecting to see from him. But at the same time, we don't need him to average 115. I think if he ends up at that 85 range, that'll be an amazing pick. So, um, yeah, I obviously we get a free watch on him in round zero, but I'm, I'm still keen on Jordan. Um, other uh, options we'd be remiss not to talk about Brody Grundy and... Definitely shook some people's confidence scoring just the 65%, uh, sorry, 65 super coach of 60% time on ground. Um, he's someone that, you know, I've been keen on Cherry all preseason and trying to find ways to get him in. So I've been toying around with Grundy out Cherry in. But yeah, where are you on Grundy? Do you still think he's a good pick? Do you think this game is representative of what we'll see from Grundy during the year? What's, what's, what's going on? I, I don't know. I don't think so. I think round zero is going to be helpful here. He played with Laddams together, obviously, and yep. he didn't try. Like, I watched him tap, jog, tap, jog, slow follow-up. I don't think yep. he was interested this game. Uh, round zero will tell us a bit more. He's still in consideration, but I've actually got English in your spot at the moment. Yeah, so, I mean, two things to point out here. Last week, he was 
very high tackle numbers. I think he had near 10 or something, which we said we didn't expect, but I really liked that he had that tackling intent. Um, this game, just the two. And to your point, like much more lackadaisical with how he approached the football. Um, on top of that, he attended like roughly just 50% of ruck contests, which is the, I guess the more worrying sign. We want Grundy to be the number one ruck. That's where he's done his best work. So if we see um, Swans playing Laddams as part of that side, and them splitting the ruck work, then I think I'm off Grundy. But yeah, we'll see what happens in round zero. Moving on, um, Sheldrick is one that I was really keen on the preseason. Just the 43 supercoach from 78% time on ground, but lots of opportunity now with Adams gone, Parker gone, Mills gone, as you pointed out. Um, any interest in him? I guess he's probably a round zero special because he didn't really show it in this game. Yeah, just I'm going to wait. I don't have a definitive call on Sheldrick, but he's got to play, surely. So I'll wait for yeah. round zero. Yeah, Wanted to see a so. bit more though. Um, and then, yeah, Warner obviously didn't play, but any thought about him at all? No, nah, not a massive accumulator. I could be wrong, but uh, no, nah, yeah. I've never been interested in Warner as a fantasy prospect. Have you? All right. And then um, to finish off, then let's talk about the one rookie that everyone's been excited for, which is Matt Roberts. Uh, playing off half back, put up a 100 super coach off 79% time on ground and looked really good in this game, getting into good positions, linking up in play. Um, yeah, I, I liked what I saw. Were you, you know, big fan? Is he on your bench, on field? Where's he sitting? I don't have him. If he's named, I'll what? Pick him. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think the big watch on this one is that Lloyd did not play this game, so uh, he's going to be bumped down the pecking order one come the real thing, and that does worry me a little bit. Both in terms of do they want to play three half backs and and what's his job security, um, uh, what's his scoring potential when that happens. So. Uh, yeah, once again, round zero kind of spoils the surprise, but we'll wait and see on that one. <laughs> Moving over to the lined side. So, um, oh, it's Zorko 133. I did not expect that. And uh, Clug up at 162. Um, any of the premiums kind of get you interested at all? Mm -hmm. I think it's very hard given the early buy. Uh, Dunkley's one that I had pegged to maybe improve this year, but um, yeah, nothing really for there. So let's get into the cheaper options and the rookies where they've got a few of those, but Kitty Coleman, one that a lot of people have been keen on, uh, was tearing up this game early, 89 super coach in the end off 74% time on ground. Uh, is he, you know, in considerations for you at all? I think a little bit. I'm just struggling, struggling at that D5 spot. Wilmot's playing a little bit wing and they've stated that some like, who the hell is going to score in that defense? You know, McKenna's not an accumulator. Who's like, the other one, like they bring in Jimmy Madden. I don't know. Um, yeah, McKenna he has isn't to score an, well, surely. Yeah. Uh, so McKenna isn't an accumulator, but he did take a lot of kick ins last year. And I think that's the one thing we've got to keep an eye on in round zero what that split looks like, how many Coleman gets. Um, and whether they keep Loman kind of playing half back for periods of that game. Um, yeah, I saw that. that. That's yeah. one I want to talk about next because he's a 150 something K. Oh, just quickly. Can you, oh, yeah. Are you, cons are you considering Coleman? I think it's hard because of the buy. Because he's what it's round two that their buy is. So he's going to um, yeah. play two games that we'll get to see, then have the buy. I, I think I'm going to correct into him if I need to rather than start him. He'd have to have a very special round zero, get all the kick ins, score really big for me to adjust and want to go him i think over others okay. um because i i guess the other thing here as well is like if i don't start zach williams um i don't want to try and have to plan to correct into both of them if required so you know maybe if he looks really good i start one but we'll see um so yeah so uh yeah loman 156k i want to say roughly that uh forward bench option i would say for us 99 super coach Played half forward, then played some half back at times. Uh, like, just, yeah, looked really good. Um, with someone that was in talks of leaving over the preseason, obviously re-signed. And, yeah, um, I'm confused as to whose role he's taken and why this would change. I mean, apart from, obviously, McKenna coming back. But, uh, yeah, is he in consideration for your starting side? I'm not sure he's best 22. I liked him. He's pushing into stoppage a fair bit early as well. Played yeah. really well, but he scored most of his points. Like as the game went on, he slowed down. So if he's there round one, I think you can take him or you can correct to him in round four. 
Cool. And then I've seen some light interest in Tunstall. Did you have an eye on him at all? And uh, mm. yeah, any interest there? Not really. Not really. Fair enough. Uh, okay. Let's go on to the next game then. GWS versus Gold Coast. Uh, okay. Oh, man. This was the Toby Green show if i ever seen one. I've oh, never yeah, seen a defense yeah. so lost at sea in that first quarter. <laughs> um, this was interesting because, yeah, Gold Coast did not have a matchup for Toby Green. And I think that is interesting consideration for some of the backline stuff they're playing around with because we finally saw the return of Powell. So we could see how Sexton, Powell, and uh, Buderick go together. And Buderick uh, came off uh, third best on that one. So definitely been moved out of, I think, a lot of people's considerations, including mine as a mid price option. But yeah, the, the result of that was they dropped Yuland and they didn't really have a small, proper small lockdown apart from Lemons. But they, they struggled to contain Green, who just tore them they apart. They just kept hand half. passing him around. They all played on him. He kicked the goal on all of them. Yeah. Lemons, um, Powell, and um, Buterick. So they've still got something to work, work out in that defense for sure. Um, uh, uh, obviously, he played great. We know what Green can do, but not considering him for our forward lines. And then Tom Green, the other Green, also played a very good game. Just looked like the contested BC is. It's got another year of development. Um, it's interesting that from the other game, obviously a lot of people are considering Golden, but not Green. Any insight as to why? I'm not sure. I think Green's buy is a little bit earlier. Uh, and Golden is, I don't know, people just like Golden for whatever reason, almost from the brown yeah. line. That's true. Um, all right, Briggs, uh, any, I've seen like maybe one or two teams with him in as a, as a ruck. Uh, any chance that he gets considered by you? Oh, I like him. I think the buy is no good though. So no. Fair enough. Uh, and then there's really not a ton to discuss of relevance from GWS other than um, Whitfield's role looks really good. Uh, once again, I don't think I'm going to be starting him just given my history with him, but I, I think he's got a chance to end up being um, a, a premium this year or close to it. Um, was managed through this game just a 50 cent time on ground, but managed 78 super coach in that point. And then GWS had a bunch of rookies that were pretty interesting. So uh, I'll start with Cadman, who's been on my bench for a lot of this weekend. I'm not sure if he'll stay there, but he definitely looks bigger with another year in the system. He's uh, been able to kick goals in consecutive weeks. It was like, what, four last week, one this one, and just looks much better. Uh, I think the probably the nicest part as well is that he's the one moving up the ground to give Briggs relief, which means he's getting involved around the ground rather than just having to rely on goals. And I guess some consideration for him as a rookie just because they play round zero and then they have the North-West Coast matchups. North do not have a defense. West Coast do have a defense, but they're going to get beaten pretty badly everywhere else. Um, so I think there's a decent chance he pops a really big ceiling score in the first couple of weeks and, and makes some nice money for us earlier than other rookies would. But yeah, what, what were your thoughts on Cadman and have you played around with him on the bench? No, I like a few others ahead of him. But he played well. As you could see he was getting to more contests. So I think that's what you want to see as a Giants fan. But I think yeah. he's fine. I mean, if, he, if, he, if he pops up like an 80 or something on Collingwood, I reckon he's going to end up on a lot of benches given that he has two very, very good matchups after that. Um, and then the other rookies probably worth talking about are Fahey and Ware. Um, I guess I always struggle with GWS just because I don't know who's best 22, who isn't, and who's going to stay on that side. I thought both of them looked serviceable and, and could be good rookies. Uh, but yeah, did did you have a preference? Did you notice either? Do you, you know, are they either of them in consideration? No, um, Perryman and Cumming are still out. I think there might be another one that I'm forgetting. Okay, easy as that. Also, uh, Harvey Thomas. Oh, I think yes. he's got Keep Darcy Jones. Thomas. Yeah, mid forward. Um, they found yeah, another so he... one in him. He played good, but. Yeah, 72 uh, of 75. Yeah, we got Darcy Jones to return as well, don't we? Yeah, I think it's hard to drop Thomas, though, after that. So I think he'll play round one. I'm probably not going to pick him. I think I'm just going the mature age route this year. But yeah, one to keep on your watch list. And then moving over to Gold Coast. Uh, look, I'd start with premium as well. Let's just talk about Sexton because with that scoring, he could be a premium. Uh, he looked really good at half back. 
And it's not just like a forward moving back and not being able to do any of the defensive stuff or by just playing kick to kick. There was a bit of that, but I thought he was actually moving the ball pretty well. He was taking kick-ins, obviously. Um, yeah, I, I don't see why they wouldn't persist with him in that role. Yeah, I think we just pick him and then see how you go. Yep, on-field option for mine. Yeah, uh, and then things. premiums, I guess, worth talking about uh, Miller and Rao. Uh, sorry, not Rao, Miller and Flanders. Um, so, yeah, Miller's a discounted premium type range. I think he looks a lot better than what we've seen in the past. He didn't seem to be playing necessarily his defensive mid that we saw at the end of last year and has maybe shook some of those um, problems that he had with his knee. But once again, someone that I haven't seen a lot of people talk about, I'm sure he's in a fair, fair chunk of teams. Um, oh, it looks like over 20% of the comp have him. But yeah, any any consideration for Took? No. He played all right. Like, it was just standard inside in and under game. Um, I don't know. I don't know why. I just haven't considered him all preseason. I guess durability, durability last year wasn't great. Um, don't know what we're going to get from him. Surely he goes 110, but looks like he's the main dog in there again. Yeah, he, he had uh, 75% of their CBAs, which I think only um, Noah Anderson had more at 82%. Um, and then what was interesting or the change this week from last week. So last week we saw four really solid um, rotations, which is, I guess, similar to what we've seen in the Tigers the past, which was Noah Anderson, Raul, Miller, and then Flanders. This week uh, that dropped away and that Flanders um, shared a little bit more with uh, Bailey Humphrey in particular. So he ended up with just 32% of CBAs and his score maybe reflects that a little bit Um it doesn't help that they got beaten up pretty badly as well. So they didn't have as many points going around the team. But yeah, just the 65 off 83% time on ground. But the biggest concern here, not necessarily the score, is just that role seemed worse than what we'd seen last week. Uh, are you getting a little bit nervous about Flanders? Yeah, not as confident as I have been all preseason. I don't know what he was doing. He was just running up and down the ground and ball was going over, going over his head. Ball was transitioning pretty quick all game. Usually that's like his bread and butter, just heaps of transition points. But um, I wouldn't. I'm not ruling him out. I want to see it again. I think if we didn't have round zero, I wouldn't pick him. But we'll see what happens in round zero. Like hard week. It was like what a week or two ago. He said, "Like pick him in your fantasy team. We're going to feed him the ball," yeah. which was a weird comment for a midfielder. But um, I think we just watch round zero, but not as confident. Are you confident in him or just sort of wait it out? My my conspiracy theory here is that Hardwick is missing like that Melbourne media attention. And so he's just giving sound bites now that he knows we'll get focus on the side. You know, like the 80% of the premiership teams here, actually it's 100%. And like, you know, um, uh, Buderick's going to get that uh, short roll. Like he's saying stuff that will get media clips so they get attention. I, like this is my Hardwick conspiracy theory. Um so yeah, I mean, I'm I'm worried about Flanders too after seeing this, like because the it's the the role in the CBA is what I care about. If he had a 65 percent, a 65 super coach score, but had you know 70 percent CBAs, I, I probably wouldn't be too fast. But the fact that they dropped his CBAs this week and got um, Bailey Humphrey more involved does scare me uh, for sure. Uh, and then just quickly, I mean, yeah, Buderick we already talked about, probably not an option at the moment unless we see um, a change in that role in round zero with him kind of being ahead of Sexton um, in the pecking order. Yeah, kick-ins uh, were too low. Sexton yeah. and Power had way more. I think Buderick had one or two. The others had just all the rest. Yeah, so Powell eight, um, Sexton six, and Buderick just the one. So, yeah, that's that's not a Jaden Short role, all right? You are a liar. Now. Yes. Um, you're embarrassing cat. us. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and then just quickly on rookies, I mean, I think uh, Tom Berry ended up being probably the highest scoring one, 54. Yuland uh, didn't play a full game. Um, so really not too much to consider from the list here. Okay, Geelong Essendon. Um, oh, uh, Cats. Um, yeah, that, that midfield looks absolutely shocking. Um, so Holmes uh, seemed like he could be a sneaky mid-price option. I just think uh, we've probably got too many others at that same price point in the midfield. But yeah, Holmes in consideration at all for you? Too injury prone, no. 
108 off 65 time and ground is you know very good scoring um but yes uh, probably the same and then uh tom stewart uh quite a down game in terms of scoring uh any concern from you at all on tommy stewart no nah, low tog i think is it yeah uh, 68 percent um, time and ground yeah i guess the only worry with him is age regression at 31 mm-hmm. but plays an easy role. I don't think he'll matter too much. He's signed a massive deal. He's playing for a long time. <laughs> uh, so, no, he's in my team. I think out of necessity of picking premiums at the moment. So, I've got him. Yep. Not okay. I mean I, like, I mean, I think Cats are going to regress again this year. It just looks like it's in the cards that they go backwards, um, which means I think like any age-related regression is probably going to be offset by more ball in their defensive half. So, we'll see how we go. But, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still like the start Stuart. Um, and then, yeah, beyond that, I think we start getting into some of the rookies that are worth talking about. So um, Jai Clark, I think he's a lock for my bench at the moment, just looked really good in that inside mid role. Uh, I think he would have been close to leading their CBAs, if not actually leading. Yeah, 64%. Um, so up there with the top. Um, actually, it's weird that that was the highest amount that they had outside of a rock. Uh, and then, yeah, um, a few popped up that we maybe weren't considering about as much. So, um Dempsey do you want to talk about him and what you saw because I know you've been pretty keen on him after that game yeah straight in my forward bench he killed it he kept getting it half forward was damaging with the ball looked really good just yep. moved really well I don't know I just like him I, they've been saying he's ahead of mana and looks like it uh he's on my forward bench and I'm paying extra for him yeah, this is the hard thing. Um, so they were missing Rowan and Henry have got to come back into that forward line. And when Mana came on, Mana also looked really good. Like I couldn't fault. I mean, obviously he came on late and 27% time on ground, but he was electric for that for that period that he came on. And I think Cats came from behind to beat the Bombers. He was part of that. Obviously Dempsey was part of that as well and, and looked really good too. Um, but it's an interesting problem. We actually have a few of these nice options uh, up the ground there. So yeah, Manor, obviously a lot of people have been keen on just because he's got great uh, uh, numbers from last year, mature age recruit, but sounds like he's going to be too much of a sub-risk or potentially won't play. Yeah, we'll see what happens when those ins come back. I'm not sure Rowan's best 22. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'd be okay with him getting dropped, but I think a lot of people suspect that he will still get play. Okay, well, that's a concern then. That's something I'll monitor, I guess. Yep. I hope we get a uh, timeline on there. I don't know what the injury status is if they're or this rested. I don't know, but we'll monitor that. Yeah, and we're into our round one teams here, so we actually got to go in blind and actually make some good educated guesses. How fun. What we saw actually mattered. Um, all right, and then uh, Bombers uh, put up some very nice super coach in fantasy numbers but did not walk away with the win. Um, from the premium side, I guess uh, Darcy Parrish is the one that I've seen a few people talk about on the back of this game. Uh, is he in consideration for you at all? I don't even know why I asked that. Calf, calf, <laughs> calf uh, no, I don't want injuries him. in consecutive years. There's no way. I think with right. the Bombers, just I reckon you just talk on them. If you want my opinion, ask, but uh, you've got a much better read than I do here. Okay. Um, so the only one that I was really considering starting from this is Nick Martin, and we wanted to see that day cost halfback role. We saw it, and he looked good. Uh, like, honestly, outside of merit, he feels like the only other person that you can put the ball in the hands of and actually ask him to open up the game through the middle of the ground at the moment. Uh, Redmond's too inconsistent. Ridley's probably too slow and now injured. Uh, so I think he did a really good job of that. The biggest risk here would be that he gets tagged by Finn McGuinness round one if they go that way. But I still don't know why they'd tag him over Merritt, given that we haven't even seen Martin execute this in a real game. And he did have moments where he turned over the ball and all that type of stuff. It's not like he is Dacos um, or is familiar with playing that role, but he definitely got fed like it, uh, which was really great to see. And someone I'm definitely still considering... Um, as someone that I start on my side, gets defender status, and then hopefully goes on to be a top six defender. Uh, where are you at with Nick Martin? Yeah, I saw what I wanted to see with him. Yep. Uh, I think the the only... ball was like, yeah, it was just, it was just everywhere. It was like wherever the yep. ball was, he was basically. The only thing it would have been nicer to see is just a greater split of kick-in. So uh, Redman had nine, Martin four, McGrath two, Merritt one, Ridley one. Um, so, yeah, it would have been nice to to see him have a greater split. But I, I noticed that even when Redman or someone else is taking kick-ins, a lot of the time I actually look for him on that first kick in, in the field anyway. Um, and he, he's – like Nick Barton looked for merit a lot through the ground, so that may actually end up helping his scoring as well. 
Uh, and then the other player that's really worth talking about is uh, Zach Reed. So 80 super coach from 92% time on ground. Looked really, really good. Um, like, he's obviously not someone that gets used in chains, but they're not afraid to give him the ball as a big man that actually can kick and, you know, handball and not be a complete giraffe when he's got it. So uh, he's locked on my bench. I don't see how I don't start him uh, in my team this year. Is is that where you're at with Reed? Can he take Ridley's role or will he just play key? I think they'll just play him key. The, the hard thing with Ridley is, so it's a strain, which can be one or two weeks, but given he's got quad injury history, I reckon they hold him out to round two or three. So it's not going to be that long anyway. Ideally, we would have played Baldwin, but Baldwin went down with a stress fracture in the preseason. So I'm curious as to what we do with the third tall here. Um, Nick Cox is playing kind of wing and then rolling back. And I assume that we just play Nick Cox in Ridley's role. Otherwise, it's we use Laverde for that. But Laverde looked so slow and passed it on the weekend that I, I hope that's not what we uh, do. So yeah, a bit hard to say, but I think Nick Cox actually probably plays Ridley's role until Ridley's back. Yeah, like I think Reed's will be the best defender rookie. Wow, the best is I mean, I guess he's cheaper than some of the other ones that we're looking at. But yeah, uh yeah, I'm really excited for him. Uh, I think I've talked about him a bunch, but he's two or five centimeters, like his fourth year. He's had stress related back issues, which has been what's held him out of playing, but um they've got really big wraps on him and they've been training Mackay and Reed as the one two um all, all preseason that's trying to get that synergy in the defense. Uh, I'm just trying to look. Is there anyone else selected from these sides that's worth talking about? Uh, no. I mean, there's some Sardis ownership, but uh, like, I don't think you're serious. If you've got Sardis on your side, you're probably just an Essendon homer. Port Frio. Um, look, big shock to start this one with Butters rolling his ankle and coming off very early. Uh, only ended up on eight supercoach from 9% time on ground. Uh, one that we a lot of us were considering is uh, is he come out of your consideration set? I think the biggest worry for me was I can't remember who said it, but someone said that he'd actually tweaked his ankle a couple of weeks beforehand, and so reoccurrence like oh that's a bit of a worry. Why aren't you taping your ankles and all that type of stuff? It apparently does help with preventing ankle roll injuries. Um, but yeah, pulled him out as a precaution. It sounds like he'll still be ready to go for round one. But yeah, thoughts on Butters? Oh, I don't know. I've had him like the whole preseason and then I took him out. Yeah. I think he'll yeah, be I, fine though. I think he's fine yeah. to pick, but I don't like any doubt. I think this is like, I don't think there'll be anything though. Yeah. I mean, uh, like I think protect him, right? Like it makes sense that they did, but uh, so I, if it's one of those ones where if they just rested him and sat him out for the whole game, I'd be completely fine with it. But the fact that they that, that happened and then they pulled him out, like, it just gives you this like hint of doubt that it that it shouldn't. Um, I think the other thing that made really hard for this game is obviously assessing Ollie Wines, who's now the talk of the town post this game. Uh, you know, very cheap in our midfield, something like what 420k, I want to say, which is priced around the 80 point mark. No, it's like 460, 460. Um, but still, like, incredibly cheap and and priced quite low. Uh, obviously, outperformed that uh, what a couple of years ago when he had his brown load, but has been injured for the last two years. Um, we need, kind of need him to get up to around that 105 mark to be a really successful pick. Um, and Hinkley said he's going to play midfield. He's played midfield. Like, are we actually considering wines? I didn't think this day would come. Yeah, I am. Uh, also with the port, they, they got six of the first eight at, at Adelaide Oval with gather round and showdowns. I don't really want to pick him because I already got Crouch. So I think I'll take Crouch over Wines, but I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up in the team. If he averages 100, I think he will average 100. I think 105 is a stretch. Got to remember who else, the other players that are around him. Yeah. Three of the most talented mids in the league. Um, I think it's fine to pick if you want. I think average 100, make you a bit of money. All right. So have you looked at the CBA stats from this game? Because I think it's interesting. Mm, no. Okay, Wine, 76%. Um, Horn Francis and Drew at 68%. Rosie, 52%. Mead at 28%. And this is with Butters missing basically the whole game. The Rosie, 52% is the one that sticks out to me because they did talk about potentially putting Butters and Rosie um, forward more uh, to accommodate for Wines, Drew, Horn Francis. And to me, that seems realistic, just given that Butters was out and Rosie still only played 50%. Uh, CBAs. I know he's got slightly reduced time on ground, so maybe that gets up to more like sixty percent um, in a in a real game. 
but yeah, like I'm one, like how much do I believe that the wine CBA is real? It's probably real just because he can't play anywhere else. Like he showed that last year, but it does put a red flag on Rosie for me, if anything. Um, I think you've been off Rosie all preseason sticking fast with that. Yeah, I don't know if he's got the ceiling and all the CBAs will be high enough to match it with what we've got this year. But I think if, you, if you're if you hot on him, like not going to stop you. I also had oh. slight interruptions in preseason, so I'll pass. All right, cool. Um, and then uh, only other premium that people have been talking about is Houston. Uh, I, I don't know. One of the hardest players for me to ever get a read on. Are, are you considering Houston? I don't even understand Houston. Is he? He's half back, eh? I mean, he's got no kick-ins and no CBAs and another ton. So what is going on? I don't know, bro. <laughs> I'm not much good to you. But, I've, but, but yeah, I, think, because... I think all these scoring came from the back line, yeah. Or like okay. half, half back kind of range, yeah. Who took kick-ins? Uh, Burton and Farrell and Jones took one, but there's only five. Like they, they didn't have many. Okay. I don't know. He has a nice run early. I don't know. His scoring is just so all over the place that I can't stomach a bad start. I'll get angry. I'm probably going to pass. I don't have a good read on Houston, as you can tell. Yeah. I mean, they do have the good buy, which I, I can see appealing to a lot of people. And uh, he had a pretty good run home last year, I think averaging something like 110, which would be nice at his price point. Um, moving on to, I guess, some of the rookies and cheaper items. Uh, Jackson Mead, I think, is priced. I think it's a Jackson. Um, he's priced at 200K, I want to say. Um, and he's a mid forward option, 112 super coach. And like, I mean, he only did it off 30% CBA. So, any consideration here for Mead? Well, I think he's just a beneficiary of Butters. So, no for me. Any? Do you have any interest in him? Uh, probably not at that point. I think the role risk just, yeah, with Butters being out, that's too much for me to gamble on. If he was 123K, maybe more interested. Um, but, yep, I think he's probably someone i pass on, but keep an eye on early. Uh, the other expensive one they have is Jace Burgoyne, who scored 67 off 63% time on ground, playing wing second week he's doing so. Um, I think he's been a little bit wasteful with the ball both times I've seen him play, which probably rules him out as a defensive rookie option for me at the moment, unless I'm really desperate to find someone else. Uh, any... Any love for Jace Burgoyne? No. Just take a 120k key defender instead. Yep. Yeah, well, especially if it's a bench option, I guess. Um, you're just looking for those spike games, which Burgoyne could definitely have. I, I think they probably could do worse. Uh, and then just uh, also worth mentioning Sin, who was one that people have been considering just given he was rumored to play half back. Um, missed the game with illness, I want to say. Um, so he's probably still a chance to come in as well. On the Fremantle side, Puke Ryan right up the top where he where he finished off last year. And the big thing for me is I'd heard that he was struggling to cook over kick over 40 meters with like a foot issue. He I noticed he had multiple long bombs this game. Uh, <laughs> well, so, what else okay. does he do? <laughs> well, I mean, well, that was the thing. I'm like, oh, he's not a pick if he can't kick more than 40 meters because that's where all his efficiency comes from. But he seemed to be right back at it this game. So, uh, yeah, uh, considering Ryan at all. I can't consider someone I have not considered the whole preseason, so no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think I've considered him once ever. I think he's so... fine, though. And I noticed, yeah. I've, I don't know if you've got the kick-in stats in front of you, but I yeah, thought took... the others take... Took... So go nah, on. it's close. So Ryan took seven, um, Clark had four, and then Warner took two. Okay. Mm. But yeah, yep, yep, yep. I think it's fine if you want to go there. I won't. There's a, there's a few... Uh, Ryan lovers. Uh, all right, let's talk about um, uh, Hayden Young then. Actually, let's just talk about the Freo midfield um, full stop. So two big changes this year. So one, they've brought in Fife. Two, they've brought in Hayden Young. And then you've got that paired up with Sarong and Brayshaw. Um, I think the concerns for me is, does bringing in those two affect Sarong and Brayshaw? One, and then can Young score well enough with Sarong and Brayshaw turning up or going 100 plus? Two, and then um, did you see uh, enough from Fife to suggest that he's actually a pick this year at his price point, given his injury history? Where do you want to start unwrapping all of that? It's a little bit messy, the midfield. I think Fife, 
I think he's fine pick. I was like fully against it, but I'm open to it. I don't have him at the moment. Um, I've put priority elsewhere, but yeah, he looks good. He looks the role good, is man. weird. He looks like, so good. He looks so good at stoppages. Hey, he's not doing enough around the ground. Like we haven't seen any marks, any tackles, and his disposals are basically all handballs, but it is like contested everything. It's hurting the team. I don't like it. To be honest, he's good at it, but I don't think this is the way forward for them. But I mean, he's still got dro- something to give. Dropping Omira would be a start. Like that's hurting the team. Uh, some of the other players, like they, they've lost. There's so much weird stuff happening in this game. They've got a lot to come back. To be fair to them as well, um, and like yeah, I think not developing Erasmus and stuff like that is probably hurting. Not having Matty Johnson get more CBAs is hurting. But yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't place it on the feet of five. Like there's a lot of weird stuff going on with Freo at the moment. Yeah, look, I think five's a fine option. I don't. Is he must have to you? What do you reckon? No, no. So, it, so this is like funny, but uh, like I, I've I've had him basically all preseason, right? Because if he's fit, which he is, right, he hasn't had any setbacks, um, and he's playing midfield, which we've seen him go hundred plus with before, and he looks good doing it. Then, like, yeah, I, I like I think he in a year where we've got weak forward lines, he can go into the eighties, absolutely return great value on what his starting price is. We're also at a point now where we've got like four or five good options that look like him and we've got good rookies in this line. So if that ends up being that there's like three or four other options that look like they could output the same score as him, but they don't have his injury history or age, I feel like I'd rather pick them than five. So he's, I don't think he's must have anymore. I think he's a good pick and could be the best of them, but it feels like we're maybe at the point where his risk profile doesn't make sense. Um, especially given that he is so reliant on those stoppage points and he's just getting nothing around the ground. But at the same time, I do love Fife. I like watching Fife. I want to watch Fife and cheer for him. Uh, so, you know, if I don't own for him, I'm going to be death riding. He's like over 50% owned. Like he's got massive ownership, more than any of the other mid price forwards that we'll talk about. Um, but yeah, as I, as I see it right now, he's not must own just because there's enough other good options. But if say like Billings and Jordan stink up round zero, then, yeah, I don't know. I feel like he probably is a must-have then. You seem so unsure about this pick. And you muted yourself, which is a classic Giordano move. Let's sort of deep in thought. I've uh, yeah, clicked that too many times. Um, he's just going to average like 80, 85, I think. That's, that's good. Like, that's so good. Okay. It's good. <laughs> with the injury the risk. Too, but with the injury high. risk, it makes it a little bit harder. Yeah, yep. It's yep. fine. Like I, I don't think I'll pick it, but if yeah, round zero shenanigans happen, then maybe. Maybe. Okay. Uh and then yeah, Brayshaw is I guess the one that I'd had in my team a lot of the preseason, but he clearly played more wing, has done so the last couple of weeks, really. I, I think I'm out on Brayshaw now. The same yeah, boat. Move on. Yep. And yeah, wing young. time, uh, move on. Hayden Young, a lot of people were doubting after what we saw last week, but this week uh, they really bumped up his CBAs. He actually led all comers with 80% CBAs, and I thought he looked really good. Like, this is the role he should be playing uh, for them going forward. Obviously, his score has been boosted by the fact he had five shots on goals, which won't happen every week. I think the, the only thing that was kind of interesting was he seemed to play off the back of the stoppages a little bit more, which is how he led to some of these goal opportunities, but... Yeah, Hayden Young locked into your side. We're still rolling with this pick. No, nah, rolled with it for like a week. Rolled out of him. Out of the side, but no, nah, not any. He, he'll stay in. All right. Uh, then moving on to cheaper options. Uh, actually, sorry, there's one more premium I should talk about. Otherwise, Eno will send me death threats. Um, Shrek, any Shrek love? No, nah, sorry, sorry, Eno. Too injury prone. Yeah, I mean, Jackson's out for this game, but returning uh, what for round one. So, um, yeah, I'm probably still off him. Uh, then rookies. I think there's a ton of rookies here, and I'm going to probably miss some of them as we go through it. Uh, Oscar McDonald's, the former Demon, played defense. I don't know if he holds his spot, but scored 70, which seems pretty good. That defense struggled, though. Uh, Cox is out, so I don't know. Cox is out, yes. He's back. Yeah, probably doesn't hold when Cox returns. That's right. Cox scored a lot in that role, but yeah, I actually isn't Cox out for like a period of time though, like a month. I, no I might idea. be making that up. I might be making that up. All right, one to look into. Jeremy Sharp was probably the one that we were most considering on the way in. Fifty-one uh, super coach off seventy-seven percent time on ground, playing wing, mature age recruit from Gold Coast who played wing there previously and kind of done enough to score 
um, given his 123k price tag. Uh, yeah, any love for Sharp coming out of the back of this game? Mm, I don't, don't have him at the moment. I thought he was okay, got better as the game went on. So, um, yep. yeah, not sure on him. Yeah, I mean, I think there's obviously some competition for spots as well with O'Driscoll and then Chapman potentially when he returns. So I'm, I, I see a mix of prayer supporters, either really for him or unsure. Uh, so he's in consideration for me, but by no means locked onto my bench at this point in the preseason. Uh, Tabna, more expensive forward, but I don't think he looked good at all. Um, Paddy Voss, the ex-bomber, uh, got rookie listed in the preseason. So I, I think he's probably still 123K, just given he was on a list last year. Um, but yeah, 75 super coach off 86% time on ground. I think the challenge is that they had, what, Jackson missing. They had a miss Emmett missing. What, sorry? Yeah, Jackson had a concussion. Emmett was sick. Yeah, Emmett was sick and Emmett was missing. So I think, yeah, like all of Voss, uh, Tabana and Treaky could force Dirt, could find themselves out of the side. Uh, and then the last one to talk about was uh, Cooper Simpson, who there'd been some chatter of, 33 super coach off 78% time on ground. Um, looks good in patches for me, but not enough to really to consider as an option with some of the other players going around. Oh, Crow's time. I've been waiting for this. Crom. This is the only reason he said yes to talk about Crom. Correct. Uh, and it was I'm absolutely crashing as well. 117. Um, I should have should have ordered them last. 117 to 50. Absolutely smashed West Coast. Uh, and I mean the the first term alone, the clearances were like 11-0 or something at one point. Like West Coast could not get their hands on the ball. Uh, yeah, Crom dominated. So take it away. Tell us all about the mighty Crom. I mean, played West Coast is a joke. So, I mean, BJ Williams had one disposal, I think. Scored wow. 15 against. This is embarrassing. Um, I, I think what's happened is with uh, Flynn going down, BJ Williams' PTSD from last year's kicked in and he's forgotten how to play football because he's better than this. But yeah, he got yeah. dominated. All their rucks got dominated. Yeah. So, Rob, big score. You can't pick him, though. Rankin is uh, an interesting one. I don't have the balls to start him, but he dominated and he's dominated all preseason, apparently. I think CBA is in the 20s or 30s, but they did take him off yeah. early. So, 20%. I think they'll be 25 to 35 every week, something like that. They have stated that he'll be more rolling up than CBA. Uh, Sam Berry, dude, I have to pick him. I don't care. He's in my team. Um, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I don't care. I'm picking him. He's 220K. Uh, realistically, he's probably playing more half forward with like CBAs. I'm going to guess in the 30s, yeah, which was what Schoenberg did. Yeah. So, um, no, I'm picking him. He looks so good. Look powerful. Like he'll, like Newcomb esque. That's how well he played. So, yeah. Newcomb esque. Wow. Are you Are going to draw some criticism for that comparison? I don't think it's a bad comparison at all. He looked powerful. Uh, yeah, in my team, straight in. Uh, what is the average, though? Uh, I think 75 to 80. Just there's too many other mids and stuff. But And I think he's that, sub-risk that's, that's, as well. That's not a good pick for his price point. 220? It's not too bad. Uh, as he'd have to get forward status for that to come off as being worthwhile. And mm. even then, even then, I don't know, man. Dude, I can't not pick him. He's 220k. I'm picking him anyway. You're going to get better by this, I reckon. I don't care. Yeah. I'm picking him. Anyway. Uh, all right. Um, Should we talk about the premiums in, in like uh, in the midfield in Laird, Dawson, and oh, Crouch? Because yeah. uh, this is, the, I guess, the big storyline of how would Crouch coming back in affect the others. And not a really a great game to get uh, a read on because all of them had managed time on ground in the end. So Crouch 59%, Dawson 66%, Laird 72%. Uh, but with that said, they all scored well for that time on ground. And I guess that's partly because of who they were playing. But the midfield worked well from what I saw. Yeah, they tried like every different combination in there. They tried one of the younger guys in there. They tried all three of the older blokes in there. So I like... Laird is no. You can't pick Laird. They've stated CPA drop plus he's older. Dawson looks fine. And then I think Matt Crouch at his price. The only issue with Crouch, I think, is... What does the tog look like? Just because they're running so many mids now, they might just play off the bench more. Like 
his tog has been 75 mostly for his career i wouldn't be surprised if that's slightly less than that so um crouch in my team dawson i think is fine to pick but very expensive and then uh laird avoid yeah i mean i'm i'm must say i'm like Laird's an avoid and i'm even a little bit worried about dawson i think there's a chance that his cbas drop a bit just because he it feels like they he can reasonably ro- be rotated out when Rankin plays on the ball if they want to get barrier rotation as well and he can be used as a Mr. Fix it. He's not doesn't need to be required in the midfield anymore if they're running all of Barry, Crouch, Laird, uh, Rankin through there. So yeah, I don't know. I'm I know a lot of people are still keen on Dawson and he's a great player. I'm, I'm a touch concerned. I've been all preseason. It might just be me though. Uh, any other relevant crom to talk about? You don't have any rookies, do you? No. Cool. All right, West Coast. Um, yeah, they looked bad. They're going to finish last on the ladder pretty easily, I would say, and the injuries aren't helping by any means. Um, I think Flynn not being their number one ruck really hurts that midfield. The good news, I think, coming out of this is really just two that I can point out, which was Elliot Yo played out the full four quarters um, as a main on-baller. I'll have to have a look at his CBA stats, but I assume they were up there pretty high. Uh, 75%, so tied at number one with Kelly. And then um, the other one worth talking about was Harley Reid, who had 61% CBAs, and then three kick-ins as well, which he played on from all of them. Uh, I mean, Yo, I think, is still a strong consideration. I know many won't because of his injury history. Once again, I think he's priced about 80. Needs to go just, just shy of 100 to be worthwhile, which I think he can do. Uh, and then uh, Reid... Uh, was someone I was toying with not having in my starting side this week, just to see what that looked like, given how bad he played last week. And even at the start of this game too, I was really critical of Reed's game because he just looked so uncomfortable. It looked like he didn't know what he was doing, where he was meant to be. Every time he had the ball, he looked great. Once he was moving forward and being part of chains, it just it just looked the rest of it looked really unnatural. And I don't know if it's just because he hasn't been in a side that's been beat up by this as much before, but he got better as the game went on and increasingly um, impressed by what I saw out of him enough so that, yeah, definitely back in my sides. I was never like, you know, fully out on him or anything like that. But yeah, this is the game I needed to get the confidence back that Reed's worth paying the, you know, 210k for. Um, Yo, I assume you're still out on just because of the injury history, but uh, Reed, uh, I assume, is locked onto your field somewhere. Yeah, I think the, the draft, anyone that watched him in his draft are pretty quick to point us out. On Twitter, that dropped him, calling us idiots and stuff. But um, uh, he's in my team. He looked much better in the midfield than halfback. I think that's where he scored most of his points. He can still like use it off halfback, but like actually, it's better if he's just winning his own ball in the midfield, using his power to create a space for himself. So now he looks good. I'll pick him on the with everyone else and field him round one. Yep. Uh, cool. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, like what Witherden people have talked about, but he's sharing kick-ins with Hunt. I just don't think that's a pick. Uh, I think Hoff is going to be the main guy back there this year. Uh, maybe maybe eventually, but yeah, yeah, didn't, yeah. Uh, and then uh, Living, on, Living, right Livingston on. was the only rookie I was really considering um, out of this side. Uh, but yeah, minus four. Uh, it, it, like just as a cheap bench option, I don't think he's going to get a game. Uh, Rawlinson... Scored 40 off 74. I think he's a 1 or 2K mid, but I don't know if he gets a game. Cool. Uh, we've got two games left. We're almost there. So Hawks, Western Bulldogs, all run to, what, last night? Uh, all right. So uh, this game was interesting. Um, even though the Dogs dominated, it was actually very good contest up until that half side with Hawks beating the Dogs up pretty much. And then the third quarter, Bont took over, absolutely destroyed them did something like 52 fantasy points uh, and the dogs ran away with it in the end. Um, on the Hawks side, uh, I think the, probably the most of the players we want to talk about are actually near the top of this list anyway. So Newcomb's one that's been hyped up as a bit of a pod cheaper midfield. Uh, did he endear himself to you in this game? No, there's nothing he could have done to convince me. So I was never considering. Yep. Same boat for me. Um, Carl Amon is one that we talked about as a, you know, Nick Martin alternative, um, playing half back, uh, scored very well in that role towards the back end of last year. Hawks like look like they could still be giving up a lot of it. Uh, so yeah, any yeah, any consideration in Amon. I will say he had eight kick ins of the seventeen or something that they had. I think it's a fine pick. 
but I don't know. I'm not picking up. I'm just not certain. So, yep. I'll pass. Uh, I mean, I, I still, the hard thing with um, Amon, and we'll talk about this with D'Ambrosio as well, is we haven't seen all of like Amon, D'Ambrosio, and Weddle in the same side. Uh, one of them has missed each of the game. So, it makes me hard to be fully convinced Amon's actually going to end up playing halfback the whole time and get the halfback or DPP status. So, I think I'd rather go Nick Martin, but and the having half the kick ins this game was pretty promising. Uh, McDonald, unfortunately, I don't think got any CBA, so he's one that we'd maybe put in as a smoky for a, a forward premium, but yes, yeah, strike him off your list. Um, and then Cam McKenzie, uh, he's really cheap, 270k, I want to say. So in with these other mid prices, looked to be playing wing, a little bit of midfield, but I thought it looked really good this game, put up the 90 super coach from 85% time on ground. Uh, is he moving into consideration for you at all? Uh, no, he's wingman. Okay, uh, very good. Uh, then let's move down the list one more. Henry Husway, uh, so rookie that really put himself in consideration last week, playing inside mid, backed it up again this week. Eighty-four super coach off seventy-three percent time on ground, and he had forty-seven percent CBAs, which uh, I think was still put him as like fourth in the rotation for the Hawks. But uh, did you like what you see out of Henry Husway, and has he made his way into your team? Yes. Yes, and he was already in the team, so saw enough the week before. Uh, didn't run out the game well, scored most of his points in the first quarter, but it looks really good. Right. And I think that role will hold. Um, By quarter here. So, yes, 32, oh, I didn't know that, won, but... 15 in the middle, and then 21 to finish off. It's just for fantasy, but, I mean, you know, it roughly correlates to the super coach as well. And it's cool. You can actually, like, filter by quarter as well, so... Okay, you can nice. top score in Q3, top score in Q4, all that type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he looks really good. Really good inside mid. Seems to find the ball. It's like big body mid, so clean as well. And I like him. He'll play on my field, I reckon, round one. Yes, I am toying around with him on my field as well at the moment. I thought I was only going to play two rookies, but he's making me reconsider to a third. Uh, D'Ambrosio, 77, super coach off uh, 76% time on ground. I know some have been considering him as a Zach Williams alternate, especially if Zach doesn't get up. Has he done enough to be considered for your side? Not sure. Don't think so because Weddle's out. I think he's, yeah. Yeah. I think he'll be mostly wing. I think he's yeah. not a bad, I don't think he's a bad pick. I don't think there's just like whatever pick. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a little bit like McKenzie. If he's playing up on wing, probably less exciting. Same with Amon. If he's playing more half back, a little bit more interesting. But we haven't seen all of them together, which means too much risk for me. Someone I'd rather downgrade to or swap a rookie to if he ends up being worthwhile picking. Uh, and then uh, Phillips is probably the only other one that's worth talking about. Obviously got picked up, what, a couple of weeks ago on the back of the Hawks um, preseason injuries. 56 super coach off 83% time on ground. Uh, I mean, that Hawks defense got beaten up pretty badly at numerous points uh in the game uh any consideration for phillips thinking about it i think they've got alternatives in jai sarong and they can move scrimmage yeah, to key position yep. yep um he dropped a few marks and he got beaten one on one one and one a few times but i think he'll be better for the run i think he's an option yeah yeah it's a little bit hard obviously coming into that system and still having to learn and all that stuff um, two other things to finish this up. Firstly, Josh Ward, I don't think should be playing ones. And the fact that he took 23% CBAs is a 23% CBAs should be going to house weight. So please. free up Connor McDonald, please. Yep. Or Connor McDonald or just anything, but yeah, I don't think you should be on that side. Um, and then, uh, we haven't talked about Sicily who I've been off all preseason, so I'm still off him, but, uh, I think the fear is that he's going to have to play taller and more accountable given what we saw out of this game, uh, completely valid. And I think he's going to struggle to back up what we've seen in previous years. However, this could just be a preseason blimp. He is a primo. But yeah, I mean, the fact that um, Amon's taking all the kick-ins as well, I, I'm off Sicily. I, I, I think he actually struggles to be a top six defender this year. I think he'll come good. Possible. Once they, once they find some synergy and some people come back, he could be something that we look at mid, mid-season. I wouldn't rule yeah. that out. So let the defense settle, I think. Just a lot of new players back there and new key defenders, like massive reshuffle everywhere. But the good news is that they're going to play. They're going to try to play two key defenders all year to help him out. So wait and see. 
Cool. All right. And then on the dogs, so as we already mentioned, Bont looked amazing. Libba also looked really good in this game, like just winning the ball at stoppages at will, um, kind of picked up from where he left off last year. Um, all the dogs scored well. English scored really well. I, I, yeah, uh, he just looked like English that we'd seen. So uh, I think the only knock on him was that Lob shared a little bit more right contests, maybe like they split three quarters a quarter, which is slightly more than the split we saw last year. So some concern there, but otherwise, yeah, English looked really good. Uh, I, I think Bonham Pelly's the only one of those three that I'm probably considering, and then maybe English. Uh, have you, yeah, toying around with them? Uh, Bond's been on my side for a while, and uh, English came into my side after this game, yeah. but I think I could pivot to Grundy. I'm not sure. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Bont, just the 67% CBAs, I guess, which is slightly down, but I mean, he can kind of score anywhere. Uh, the players that people may be wondering about a little bit more from this one that weren't premiums. So uh, let's go into Harms, the new recruit. He had 74 super coach off 72% time on ground, um, kind of playing a similar role to, I think, either McRae or what we'd seen at the Demons, where he had like half forward pushing up, uh, roughly 30% CBAs. Did he do enough to come into consideration for your forward line? No, I think McRae coming in will only hurt him. So Agreed. Agreed. I don't think it's um, a terrible pick, but I think it's just more upside elsewhere, so I'm passing. Harms or five? Oh, five. Yeah, Yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. I've got Harms below five. So if, if five's at the border for me, I think Harms below that cutoff. Uh, and then uh, we, I think we move into the rookies after that for uh, the – the dog. So two worth talking about, both as on field options. So Caulfield and Sanders. Where do you want to start? Uh, I mean Sanders lock. What else to say? Yep. He looks so good. Like he just yeah, he looks like he's been playing football football for ages. He's a natural. I've said this a number of times already. He's their third best mid. It's Bont, it's Libba, it's Sanders. He's better than Harms. He's better than McRae. Like he's better than Trelaw. Oh, he looks so good. Um, maybe that's a like exaggeration, but if he's not already better than them, he will be by the end of the year. Didn't you cop a bunch of flap for placing him over someone? I, I did that to. I put him above Patrick Cripps, and I know that oh, like comes across as a troll, yeah. and it is a I mean, little bit. But I genuinely that's a, that's a believe hot take. it. That's a fair. That's I a genuinely fair hot take. believe it. I mean, after what we've seen um, in the preseason, he could be ahead of Cripps if Cripps' body doesn't hold up. So. Um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the year, that's obviously, you know, Cripps had a great career and Sanders would be lucky to have one as good as Cripps, but he could reasonably be better than him by the end of the year, sure. Uh, all right. So, yeah, Harms, we're probably not considering. Sanders is a lock. Caulfield uh, probably didn't see the score that we wanted to and definitely playing more of that lockdown small defender, not getting involved with the chain as much. Uh, have, have you been shook and shook, shaken at all with your confidence in him as a pick? Um, uh, no, I think I may be scoring potential because he's looked a bit more defensive, not as optimistic on his scoring potential. I think he plays, he's, I think he's competing with Buku maybe for a spot, although they both played. I can't remember who was out. So Buku Karma's played as well. Uh, Keith, Keith didn't play. Um, okay. I think it was missing, but Karma seemed to play more like a tall and Caulfield more as a small. So I think that they're both safe. Um, they've got, got Keith who is like bigger and slower. They might choose to stick with Karma just to get speed into the game. And then you've got Dale to come back as well, but Dale may take out um, <laughs> Bramble, even though Bramble played a reasonable game. And then they've got to figure out what they're doing with Daniel because Daniel's better at halfback, but obviously they've trialed both him and Dale at, in the forward line. Um, but yeah, I, like we were going to touch on Karma's quickly because even though Caulfield's been the one that we've been looking at, Karma scored a little bit more with the 59 uh, super coach. And I thought he looked pretty good in this game as well. Maybe yeah, not enough to uh, consider it a bench option, just given with the other big forward options. But yeah, um, no, it's, Caulfield's all right. Karma's, I'm not too sure on. So um, yeah. And then just to leave it then. Um, uh mcneil here lucky mcneil is real the real surprise packet from this game uh, he's about 150k i think he burnt some people last year i don't know if i was one of those that he burnt but he looked really good at like that half forward role uh you've, you've surely you've got to be considering him right yeah so i was a bit out of it for a minute my mum was trying to communicate something with me but 
Um, the latest maths update. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know, but <laughs> Lockie McNeil um, in my side straight in. I've watched Whoa. him both games. Wait, he killed how, it. Did, didn't you say you had Dempsey in your side as well? Yeah, that's my that's my forward bench. You've got Wilson's both Dempsey and McNeil. Wow. Okay. Okay. That's, um, uh, that's nice. That's there nice. were the two yeah. I was most impressed with. The way I see McNeil is they need a small crumbing forward. They haven't had one for forever, a specialist mm-hmm. one. And I think he's going to be that. And he's good junior numbers as a junior, as a mid. So um, might have been an SA boy. I can't remember. So he's in my team. So this is the one knock on him that is concerning for me. He had all this scoring in one quarter. And in particular, he went missing in once they put Daniel back on in that um, second half. So he's a bit of a watch for me. I don't, like, I don't know what I'm going to get out of this, but I think uh, we're going to have to look at round one sides closely to figure out whether McNeil's a real option. I'm pretty worried about subbing him at that price point. And he was used heavily as a sub last year, which gives me the heebie-jeebies. No, I think he's much better than last year, um, just from what I've seen. He's not a must okay. I, just, I want to pick him because I like him. I want him yeah. to be a rookie pod. So I will say like uh, West was really good as a forward yeah. as well. So like if they're competing for spots, I think West still beat him out in that game, despite McNeil obviously doing some really good stuff. Yeah. Instead, they're going to force like Harms and McCray into their forward line. Bevo, man, it just he needs to go. Uh, all right. Uh, last game, today's game, Saints North. And I mean, the preseason hype package just, just kept rolling out with this one. Bonner, Fisher, there's a fair bit to unpack here. But firstly, the game was as weird as it comes. Um, we had North ball against um, Ross Lyon's very own special style of play, which effectively meant there was no stoppages at all with this game. There was 71 rock, rock contests, which is the lowest across any of the games. I think um, Collingwood Richmond was next loss with 78. And St Kilda, which was the one of the lowest stoppage teams last year, I think maybe second to Essendon, they had 89 on average. This was 18 fewer than that. So that is to say, not a lot of mid stoppages, a lot of just free-flowing ball around the ground. And it shows in a lot of the players that scored highly in this, in Fisher, Sheasel, Bonner, Scott, um, Nass, those types. Uh, but yeah, lots of uh, relevant players as well to discuss. And let's get stuck into maybe the Saints primos in um, Steele and Wanganin Malira. Steele is an interesting one because once again, fewer stoppages than what you'd normally expect. So maybe he gets a bump for that. But I still have the concern that he doesn't get involved enough around the ground, which really limits his scoring. And he was very tackle reliant today. And I know he's been a tackle beast in the past and some of where he's come down. Uh, and his scoring has been that he hasn't been tackling as much. But, yeah, I don't know. Steele's one that I had in my side, and now I'm thinking he's the one that I can move out if I like. Crouch, Wines, Nick Barton, these types. I just get a headache trying to get a read on Steele. All last year, I was like, oh, he's good. No, he's not. Oh, he's good. No, he's not. And he's bad for five weeks. Um, I'm not going to pick him. He looks better, though. He looks fitter. He looks stronger. Bigger for the upper body than last year. I think he's all right, pig. Like, not sure. Maybe the Ross Lyon system where they just move it quick is not benefiting him. Yeah, it's just not that hit up mark mid that gets evolved around the ground. You know, it's not someone that you want to use inside 50. They've got so many other users for that, which I think makes it a little bit of a concern. And then, um, yeah, Nass and uh, Rowan Marshall, I guess the other two that we should talk about as premium options. Uh, with enough value popping up around elsewhere, I see some people considering, you know, going gone and then a premium ruck. So whether it be English, Marshall, Darcy, Briggs, those types. Uh, any love for Marshall after this game? I think you can do worse than Marshall. I think he'd be my R3 oh, on my ranks. So I think I'd just pay for English instead or take a value pick. It's a bit of a weird, like, um, like weird middle ground that you don't really need to go to. So if you like him, that's fine though. Uh, okay. And then uh, Wang Ni Malira. Uh, so yeah, 107 super coach. And that's, you know, probably something like what you'd be hoping for if you paid his price for him. Can you see him getting up around that for the year? I worry what the output looks like with Bonner, Miller and Sinclair. So I think I'll just sit out. 
Yeah, I think that's a good segue into Bonham because I have the same fear. He's done enough over those last two games that he can't be dropped even when Sinclair comes Sinclair comes back, which means they're playing these three half backs as well as you know, you've got Hill and Henry and these other rebounding fast guys. What is going on here? And are we considering Bonner in our midfields now? He's what, two hundred and fifty K, something like that? I'm thinking about it. It's two hundred and eighty five K. I like keep, yeah. I keep understating the price by a little bit, but yeah, he's he's Lowly owned at the moment, 3%, but I assume that's already up from before. I think he was at 1% before today's game. I had him in fantasy before this game. I kind of saw this coming. I know Sinclair's out round one. Uh, Supercoach is- Which was confirmed on the broadcast by Sinclair, right? And he said he's likely to be uh, back round two because of a five-day break or something like that? Not 100%, but that's what it was like. He said, oh, like it'll be tough to get back for round one, but I'm trying. But you know, with a five-day break, it might be smarter to go for round two. So and it's calf issues that he's been having and he's north of 30 now. Is that right? Should be 29. Should be 29. He is 29. Okay. He just turned 29 in February. All right. He's got another year. So yeah, like Bonner's SNFL fantasy is a hundred, which is pretty good. SNFL is harder to score in for whatever reason. So, um, they just growing tough over there in South Australia, right? George. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, no, I like Bonner. I think he can do 80 plus for that price. It's actually probably not that good, actually. Um, but you can get a spike game out of him, so I think you can do worse. I'm not going to force him in, but yep, yeah. I mean, I think this is the hard one, right? Because if you've got Sanders and McCurch, and we'll talk about McCurch, some people may have gone a little bit cold on him after this game, but you've got Sanders, McCurch, and then we're also looking at Husweight. We probably can't run those three and Bonner. There's not enough good premium options elsewhere. And Barry, of course, if you love Barry. Yes, I mean, you. if you love Barry, you're probably already out. But I think for some people, it might be like, could you pick Bonner over a Husweight or a McCurch or, or one of those two? Because um, I doubt you're going to run all four. Or could you run, you know, Bonner, Sanders, McCurch, and then put Husweight on the bench? And I think that may be some of the the team decisions that, that roll out into round one. Uh, but yeah, very, very interesting here. What he's scoring looks like with Bonner, uh, with Sinclair potentially coming back. And do they play Sinclair more up the ground? Because they have toyed with him, obviously, in the midfield in the past. And they might be more confident doing that with uh, Bonner and uh, Nass looking like they can lock down half back. Uh, all right. Are you cool. considering um, Bonner? I am considering him, yeah. Like, I, I just thinking about it, like Sinclair's um, re injury risk off that calf is pretty high, just given his age and the type of injury it is. Uh, and they can use him in the midfield over some of the other types. Like they're running Sebros in there, which is very uninspiring. They've been trying other things like Philippa and stuff. I actually think there's a chance that Sinclair does get moved back into the midfield more, plays just behind the ball, and they just leave Bonner and, and Wayne and Malira uh, in half back. They may not do that, but I, I think there's a chance that they do. It's probably um, jackpot if they play Sinclair mid. What, sorry? It's hit jackpot if Sinclair plays mid. For does Sinclair? Be, for Bonner pick. Oh, yeah, for, that's what I'm saying. It could be like jackpot for... Yeah, I think there's a chance that that happens. He ends up being a very good pick. That, that, mm. That's the yeah, that's other. Uh, he actually took um, more kick-ins than Nass this game as well, which is a crazy. It was only, I think, five and uh, he took three, but yep. Uh, all right, and then moving into rookies, because there's a fair few Saints rookies that um, got games here, but I think none more impressive than Darcy Wilson, who a lot of us already had on benches, 130K, but 106 super coach, and just looks like he's made for the level... Um, hard really to fault his game in this one. Yes. Uh, more half forward than wing. Good junior numbers. 107 average, I think. That yeah. Level, and good. Yeah. It's super endurance too. So uh, Russ Lyon will love that. I, I think the question that people are going to ask is, can he actually go on the field? And by the way, six freeze four is like a crazy number. But um, yeah, can he go on field? And I, I think this scoring isn't necessarily reflective of what we'll get throughout the year. It's probably more a function of this game and exactly how it went. But he does seem to be a potential on-field option and at least a very good bench one. Where Could could you see him being someone that you put on field? Uh, matchup dependent, I think. Plays Geelong and Geelong round one. I think oh, he can... Watch from the bench that one. I mean, cats look bad. Like that could yeah. be a massacre. That's true. Um, I think he will average like sixty-five still. All right. Um, two other rookies to talk about are uh, Schoenmaker, who I think was one of their draft recruits this year. Su- Sixty super coach off seventy-nine. Uh, played defense and with Webster uh, getting a vacation. I think his job security is actually pretty good now. 
Yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to take the older guys, but he look, looked all right. Had some bad clangers, but um, I just think, yeah, I'll take the more mature guy, mature guys than Shaw Maker. So I think he, yeah, he probably plays now with Webster out. So I think the funniest part was when they were talking up his kicking and then he like kicked it 50 yeah. out in the fall. Uh, so good. The timing was perfect for that. But I think he's meant to be a little bit better of a ball use than what we saw today. And actually, um, comes into consideration for fantasy as well because I think he's 200k, right? Where Gibbs yeah. and Reed are 250k. I think you take him over the key position in that format. Yeah, nice. Uh, and then uh, Garcia was the only other one who uh, I think showed glimpses, but probably not enough to be a serious consideration in their starting sides. No, I didn't really take notice, to be honest. Okay, cool. Then let's move on to North Ball because what we're really considering at the moment is how many North players can you fit into your side? Is it like four, five, six, or seven, really? There's so many options in here. Um, so let's just run the board. We'll start with Zach Fisher. He is F1. It doesn't, hamstrings, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Have, two, have a third hamstring, doesn't matter. We're, we're all putting him in F1 on our other sides, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You just you just have to take the risk. The scoring and the role is crazy, and I think he fixed a lot of the things that we were worried about last week, especially around disposals. Looked much better. Uh, so yeah, this wasn't just like the Zebel Hall kick to kick stuff. This was genuinely getting involved in play and the style of North's play, which was very reboundy, aggressive off halfback, trying to get movement on the ball. So um, fitted in really well. The one to suffer from this uh, was McKercher, which we'll talk about. But may as well just talk about him now. 55 super coach um, off the 78 time on ground and definitely was the least involved of the three halfbacks. Uh, any nerves about McKercher? Not really. Um, don't know. Just didn't play well. It was okay when he got it. Just didn't get it as much. So considering for like M9 matchup uh, dependent, I'm going to end up with all these 200k blokes. So it's just going to be rotations and stuff based on matchup. Certainly don't fade him. No way. That's crazy. Yep. But um, yeah, I mean, I think just pick him and probably field him, I think. Still the best junior numbers of like any of the rookies, I think. So yeah, I'm not. No, I think uh, Sanders better. Oh, Sanders more disposals, I think. Maybe McCurcher fan, more Fantasy numbers, McCurcher might have been better. But anyway, it's like right up around the top. And the role, I think, is still good. It's just with three halfbacks, you're going to have some weeks where you get some inconsistency. And I guess that does make me ask, is there any concern about Sheasel, uh, with there now genuinely being three and it looking like they're going to play all three? A little bit maybe, but I think I'm just going to pick Sheasel anyway. I think it'll be fine. Cool. Uh, they had lots of kick-ins because Saints, I think, were somewhat inaccurate. So um, on kick-ins, Fish led with six, Sheasel five, then Bailey Scott three, Bacocha two, and Biggie Nguyen two. We may as well talk about Biggie Nguyen as one of the rookies. Uh, he scored 87 super coach, which is pretty crazy. Is he coming into consideration? I think he's a forward, 123K. Yeah, forward rookie. I didn't really take notice of him. He's a key defender, though, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, key defender that's got some ball skills. Yep, yep. I don't know, I don't have anything to add. I didn't really focus on him. I wonder why Common missed. Is he injured or is he just behind you and in pink? Don't know, don't haven't heard of no injury. Okay, one to watch, one to watch. Uh, all right, where to go? So, we've talked about some of the defenders. Oh, Bailey Scott, I know people were looking at him as something that could get DPP status, but I think he's behind Amon and, and Martin, even though he looked all right in this game and obviously pre-season injury stuff. Uh, George Wardlaw uh, hasn't shown enough in the last two games for him to be a consideration at that three, whatever it is, price point. Uh, even though he played mid and looked good at glimpses. Um, let's then go to Tristan Cherry, who scored 99 super coach off 85 time on ground. Uh, has he done enough to be considered above Grundy in your eyes? I'm not a Cherry man. I don't know. Not a fan. I don't love his ruck work. Tap work, like the actual like hit, hit out to advantage work. I'm not a fan of it. Hit it down the throat a few times to the Saints boys. Um, he's a no from me. I think I'd rather Grundy. So he's someone that I think should actually benefit, like hit out to advantage wise, just off um the midfield improving this year with Wardlaw hopefully being fit, with LD hopefully being fit. Like I think there's a chance he actually gets more of them this year. Uh, okay, uh, and then Dersma, another top. Should go over LDU. 
we're going to get to LDU. Don't worry. Okay. We're not forgetting about LDU. I've just kind of been skipping on. There's so many yeah. North boys. Right? I've like, yeah. been going mid prices, premium rookies. The structure's been broken down because we just want to cover about 15 of these guys. Um, uh, Dersma is the next on the list with uh, 81 super coach uh, off 84% time on ground. The best he's looked all preseason, I'd say. And you can really see where some of the upside is for him. With that role, though, in that team, I can't see myself starting him at 180K, but I'm sure some will be tempted into it off the back of this performance. So he's 190K. Uh, so, yeah, any Dersma, consider there's no way, right? There's no way. Can't fit him in too hard. Yeah. That's um, good. Though. All right. Another one I skipped over was Lazaro, uh, who scored 68 super coach off 84% time on ground. Uh, thoughts about Lazaro, because he's one that a lot of people have been very keen on. You know, I've seen him on fields for a lot of people as well. Had the 33% CBA, so definitely still seemed, at least in my eye, to be playing more of that half forward role, pushing up to the stoppage with the occasional CBA. But has he done enough to get into your team? Yeah, he's in. He'll stay. Maybe bench or field depending on the matchup which is just casino stuff anyway so uh he just stuffs up fundamentals for like that he shouldn't i don't know why it keeps happening with him but i thought he was okay he's in my team and honestly i don't think the other mids did themselves any favors so i think he'll play is he in your team Oh, I think he is at the moment. He basically hasn't been most of the preseason just because I didn't think I was going to end up running that many forwards. But uh, he's on my bench at the moment because I like I don't want to start more than Reed and Sexton on the ground. And I think then he ends up being the, my third preference. Um, I think I like enough of like Husway, uh, even potentially Bonner, Sanders and McCurch that he's not getting an on-field spot over any of those. So for me, I think it's either I have to be content with playing Zara on my bench or I just don't start him. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, there's a lot can change over the next couple of weeks. Uh, let's talk then next about uh, Pink. So 70 super coach off uh, 90 time on ground. So huge um, uh, fantasy to super coach ratio. Once again, doing some of those defensive acts, but not necessarily getting a lot of the ball. Uh, I think he's another reasonable bench option in defense, but I don't know. I like I wouldn't start him over Reed, and I probably wouldn't start him over Gibkiss. Uh, and I'm not sure I want to field Gibkiss or Reed. So that kind of leaves me in an awkward position where I don't really think I'll fit him in. Mm, I'm happy to field one of those blokes. In which Just case, you'd be I... happy to start pink over Yeah, Phillips. I think he's my third over Phillips. Don't know. I mean, I think pink probably has greater job security than Phillips if you're worried about Sarong and stuff like that. And maybe even... Um, uh, Granger Brass when he gets fit. I know they've been playing forward, but yeah, I think they'll all play. I think they've Pink's fine. Pick. I think he probably average like 50, 55. In which case, maybe you take the cheaper option if you need the money. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, then Powell, who was one that I had earmarked as a potential mid price forward option, but I think off the back of this game, I'm going to avoid that. I think I was saved at the back of this one. So he started off playing CBA mid and did so well. I think he had something like seven of nine CBAs in the first quarter. Then Webster took out Simkin and he got moved to half forward when Phillips came on. Phillips took his CBAs in mid time. Phillips ended up with 58% CBAs and Powell ended up with just 38%. So I think I'm off Powell on the back of this, just given with what we saw there. Even if Simkin comes back round one, I, like he's one injury away from being moved into the half forward line. I hate that. So I think I'm out on Powell. Um, yeah, any thoughts here? Yeah, in role not secure. Still unsure if he's any good. He's got some good things about him, but like I don't know if he's a complete player. So nah, I'm out. Um, and then yeah, Dawson. I know some had talked about him. He's a high price defender, but yeah, we got no, enough other expensive. options that are better than that. And then let's move all the way down to the bottom. And who is this on thirty six super coach? Uh, LDU. Surely not one this of was the round one. Uh, I, so oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I've had um, uh, this like lead, but worse. I had two midfielders locked into my midfield all preseason both formats ldu and butters and they scored like 9 and 36 between them this preseason game it's taking all my willpower not to move both of them on but yeah should people be panicking about ldu's preseason performance of a 36 i don't know he did this last year he scored like 50 apparently in yep. um last preseason game then he went 150 140 I don't know. Like, 
it's annoying because you just rather just not have another, not put any doubt in your mind. But uh, this is like, he's not going to score like this in the actual season. So when fully fit. So I wouldn't be worried. Like if I had Bont and he scored this, like Bont wouldn't, but I'd be like, I don't care. He probably didn't try. So yeah, yeah I don't so, know. A couple of things. So, yeah, obviously you pointed out already that he did this in the preseason last year and was fine. Um, secondly, six free against is like twice as many as any he's had in an actual regular season game. Like he's never had more than three. Um, so, like a lot of negative points coming in off claims, that type of stuff. Uh, and then the last thing is that they, once again, they only had 71 stoppages. I think North average 94 last year. Um, so that's a big drop, like 23. It's it's a huge drop in terms of number of stoppages, and that's where LD is going to do some of his better work. But I do wonder if uh, partly with how North has changed their game plot style with a bit of the North ball, uh, whether it actually does hurt someone like LDU, uh, whether there is less stoppages for them, more ping pong, and uh, yeah, it, it really limits what his upside is and whether he can get back to that 130 range. That's like the slight concern I have in the back of my mind on the back of this. I think I'm still probably going to start him, but there are a few factors now weighing up, especially with the injury. Just come to history. Errol, bro. He's got the buy. He's got the buy. Um, all right. Well, I think that's the preseason game review. Uh, we've that that took much longer than what I expected. So thanks for jumping on and talking through those players and the games and what you saw uh, in them. Before we sign off, George, can I just get uh, maybe like you have two or three players that had stocks up the most from this and then two or three that we stocks down the biggest from the games over the weekend. Oh, okay. Uh, stocks up Fisher. Yep. Um, probably James Jordan. Yep. Yep. And Errol. Yep. Just yep. beneficiaries of injuries and stuff too. Stocks down. Um, Powell, I guess. Not many were considering yeah. him anyway. No, I mean, I was considering enough. He'd be, like, personally, he'd be one of my big, big... He's gone from considered to not at all. Yep. Um, honestly, don't know. Laird, big stocks down. We kind yeah. of saw it coming. Yeah, it wasn't in uh, my consideration set, but that it kind of erased any doubt that I should be looking at him for mine. I don't want to put Sicily in this bucket, but... Mate, he's so far down. He's got to be. I'm not a... I'm still a believer, but I don't know. Anyway, who are yours? Uh, I, like, it's I, hard to disagree. I mean, you could go stocks up on some of these players like Bonner, who I hadn't even really thought about at all. Um, but in terms of those that were already on my list that kind of bumped themselves up even more, I think, um, yeah, Jordan's probably one uh, from... Is anyone from defense? Oh, Yo's probably still stops uh, stocks up for me. Like I think he's done enough now that I'm I'm pretty keen on him. And then Gorn, um, I think if uh, if he if I'd seen a bad game out of Gorn, like maybe I could have like been wavered away. But no, I think he's like real locked in. So just to give some different answers to yours, um, stocks down. I mean, yeah, like Power probably would agree with Sicily was never in my side, so I'll, let's let's avoid him. Um, stocks down. Probably Fife, actually. For someone that's been so hot on Fife, I think so many other options popped up that he like went down a little bit in my consideration. Um, I want to struggle to find another name here. Oh, Buderick? Uh, stocks down Buderick, yeah. for sure. I was still playing around with Buderick D5 Flanders structures. too. Oh, yeah, Flanders is another good one. Yeah, yeah, the Gold Coast game definitely stuffed it. All right, well, thank you, George, uh, for joining me. Any last words before we sign off? Mm, no, nah, I hope this season starts well. I can't take another bad start, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> All right. Well, um, thank you all for joining us to cover off these games. Uh, lots more content to come out of FTTV over the next couple of weeks as we obviously go through team reveals, what happens in round zero and so much more. But thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.